In January, Anthony Scott announced a Halloween-themed stop mo jam to the day before my birthday. I had a mental image of an anglerfish lighting up a sunken pumpkin. But I could only play if I finished Stars of Stone first. And I did, in the last days of August. So I started this on September 1st. Luckily, I could just grab a spring pumpkin from the garden. And an anglerfish from the fish tank. Oh hey, can you hold this for me? And I was ready to focus on my animation. In my dreams. The body of the fish is supported with florist's wire that I twisted freehand into some shapes. I had made a circuit with a white LED I had on hand and convinced myself that it would be good enough. I used a bit of heat shrink to make the lure. This is great, I will definitely be using this. The lure goes out the top of the fish and the battery and switch fit in the body. Time to cover it in tissue paper strips and watered down PVA. I layer each strip carefully to minimize the visible edges. This abuse paintbrush was vital for getting the glue in the nooks and crannies. I think these anglerfish look like they have papery skin, so this is great. Originally, I intended this puppet to swim, like this museum specimen would have. But I realized a moving light source would be a headache for rig removal. So plans changed. So I was thinking the feet of this anglerfish that I can't identify would be lovely. They're made with clay and scrap wire, but if I had more time, I would have remade the body and attached them to that wire. But as it was, I used a matchstick to keep the puppet from falling forward, and secured the whole thing with more paper and glue. I base coated the fish in red, thinking that red is nearly invisible in deep water, but this won't stay. For her teeth, we'll use these pointy ends of toothpicks left over from a sea urchin. This double-sided tape will keep me from knocking them off the table while I paint them white. I made this unnecessary dorsal fin for some character and while it dried, prepared the teeth. I paired them by size and glued the fin on. I'll use two-part epoxy called green stuff here because it's what I have to make this nice little sausage for some gums. I use water to keep it from sticking to my fingers and move on to the dental work. <laughs> what a lovely smile, but we're missing eyes. For those, I'm using two hard spheres of leftover epoxy. A quick coat of paint and they're looking pretty good. While they dry, I paint the gums and try not to overpaint the teeth too much. They look too clean, so I add a little yellow. More epoxy snakes secure the eyes and we're getting somewhere. Now for the pumpkin. I started making a paper mache pumpkin on a balloon and I used string to give it some shape. Three days later, I covered this thing in air dry clay and it was a horrible mess, so it went in the trash. By now you've seen enough paper mache, so you can imagine what adding seven layers of tissue paper on a new balloon looked like. This, when it was dry, I wanted to paint the inside of it while it was accessible, but that turned out pointless. I'm painting this piece and I'm not even going to use it. I did two coats, and one upshot is I repainted the fish this color and I really like it. I inverted part of the lid, add more glue and paper, and let it dry. And now for past me. Just tearing up these egg cartons as fast as possible to get them soaking. Because the goal is to take all these little fibers apart and use them as the structure with some glue, with paper mache. And it's gonna go because it's already kind of pumpkin colored vaguely. So I ran this through my blender in the kitchen while I was cooking pumpkin and everything was this color and it wasn't confusing at all. I squeeze out the water until it's a little crumbly and mix it with PVA until it's halfway between sticky and wet. I started this pumpkin three days ago and it looked like this when it was wet. Now it's dry and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The seam between old and new is basically invisible. This stuff goes on a bit like clay and it has a really fun texture and it's satisfying to work with, even though it doesn't take on small details. I was going to fill out the bumps with another coat, but that was going to be impractical for lots of reasons. And anyway, I kind of like the shape. With drying time, this pumpkin has taken me six days of work and it's not quite halfway done. I'm honestly a little nervous I'll run out of time. This is taking long enough. So one coat of paper mache later and let's get it painted. A dead greenish color for the stem and then a base coat of white gesso to even out the paper seams on the pumpkin. Now to make it orange. I mix a giant glob of ketchup and mustard, and oh, that color is so satisfying. I paint it over once, and again, and a third time. And here I thought I was ready to animate. 
The extreme low light of the LED wasn't enough to focus my camera by, and honestly, the color wasn't what I wanted. So back to the drawing board. <sighs> With lockdown easing, I ordered a new LED and picked it up the next day. So it's time to make a new circuit, this time with a new, tiny, brighter orange LED. Using lessons I learned, it went much faster. No, nice. I lied, this took forever. Welcome to the madness zone. I did decide to move the resistor inside, which made it look more streamlined. I have forgotten how this thing works, but I was recording it, so we're okay. This one's the positive, this one's the negative. You. A full unit of nonsense later. Open mind. Oh, there's one. Okay, positive side is done. I'm sure. Let's say I'm positive. <laughs> A bit of paint, and I can finally reinstall it and repair the teeth. The teeth? Gosh darn it. Did I just lose all the teeth? Here they are. Ta-da! Back to animating. And the orange paint in the pumpkin is great, but the light on the fish is too bright. A paper lantern is not the answer, but my finger diffuses it well. A little piece of clay is an improvement. More is better. And there we go. We got a little light source. I did some quick set dressing with deep water props I already had. Too bad they don't show up in the animation. It took 8 seconds of exposure per frame in otherwise complete darkness, so I animated this over 3 nights as fast as I could. While I don't think I'll be using this technique again anytime soon, I learned so much from this project and I can't wait to put it into my future animations. Thanks to Anthony Scott for hosting this and putting it all together. And if you haven't seen them yet, the other animations are jaw-droppingly great and outclass what I did so many times. So go scrub your peepers on that amazing work. You can click here or see the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.